Hey everyone, welcome to the front row with Ed and Elizabeth. Uh, my name is Ed Debu, physical therapist out of Integrated Physical Therapy in Bellingham, Washington. We're going to talk today about scaling trigger points and neck pain, facial pain, arm numbness. The scaling muscles, there's three of them. There's an anterior, there's a middle, and there's a posterior. They're located on the side of the neck here. They're a little bit challenging to get to, but I'm going to teach you how to get to them. They are my first go-to muscle if I have patients that have any type of neck pain, headaches, arm pain, numbness, elbow pain that's chronic. Any type of scaling irritation can really wreak havoc on the whole system. So let's first meet the muscle and take a look at the referred pain pattern in case we do have a trigger point in the scaling. Trigger point work is generally very safe, but there are a couple of extra precautions we need to take just because of the location of the scalenes on the anterior and lateral part of the neck or cervical spine. First one is be gentle. Uh, don't use any tools or hard objects in this area. Never massage a pulse. If you are feeling something on your fingers, just move over. Talk to your doctor first if you have any history of stroke or cardiovascular disease. Stop if you feel dizzy or lightheaded. And of course, use common sense in this area. It helps to know a little bit of the anatomy in the area when you are trying to locate and massage the scalenes. The three anatomical areas that you must be able to identify. First one is the sternocleidomastoid, which is a strap muscle. And you can see along the picture where it is. Then we have the clavicle at the bottom end, which is just your collarbone. And then towards the back or posterior side, we have the edge of the trapezius muscle. So as you can see, it kind of forms a triangle, and what you'll find is that the medial and anterior scalene and part of the posterior scalene all lives in that triangle. The take-home message is anything tender that you feel in that triangle that's not pulsing, go ahead and give it some trigger point work. This is a slide on the right-hand side where you can see I've put X's where the trigger points are, and that's typically where you're going to find the most tenderness. As you can see, it's on the front and lateral aspect of the neck. On the left-hand side in red is everywhere where you can feel pain if you have activation of the scalene trigger points. This also includes numbness, tingling. So the scalenes are really your first muscle that you want to check with any upper extremity or neck pain. Although you can do trigger point work on the scalene standing, I recommend lying down. The first thing we have to do is identify that anatomical triangle. So there's the clavicle, there's the edge of the trapezius, and then you can feel that big strap muscle. It's called the SCM or the sterticlidomastoid. To find the anterior scalene, what you want to do here is in this example, I'm working my left SCM and I'm literally grabbing it and I'm pulling it across or towards my windpipe and I'm getting underneath it with the pads of my fingers and I'm going back and forth strokes all the way up and down from underneath the jaw all the way down right above the clavicle. Anything that's tender will get worked for about 8 to 10 strokes and then I'm going to move on. The middle scalene is easier to find. It's basically that lateral knobs on the side or the bumps on the side of your neck. Start at the top by the ear and work your way down. That's the most lateral part of the neck. And once again, anything that's tender, eight to ten times back and forth, and then leave it alone. The posterior scalene is a little trickier to find, but what you'll do is you'll try to find that border with a clavicle and that upper trapezius starts and then dig just a little bit in that area. If you find something tender, remember eight to ten little strokes and then come out of there and you're done. Many of my patients get pretty nervous about doing any type of trigger point work to the front of the neck because of the vertebral artery, the lymph nodes, and just in general poking around the neck. However, let's go over the precautions again real quick. If you find that work in the trigger points in your neck are helping any symptoms that you might have in your arm, neck, or shoulder, you can work the trigger points and do this series 
two, three times a day. Remember, you're only massaging each trigger point for about eight to 10 strokes and then moving on because you can overdo it in this area if you work at it too hard. As long as you follow these precautions, working the scalings can be a very effective way of self-managing any type of neck pain, arm pain, numbness. Like I said, I've had patients that have had some chronic forearm pain that ended up having trigger points in the scaling. So it is my very first go-to muscle when I'm checking for people that have any type of neck pain that come into the clinic. All right, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do that. And good luck with your scaling work.